Hey everybody, so Heidi here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a bunch of really cool, simple shortcuts and tricks you can use to speed up your il Illustrator workflow, get more confidence, and get more comfortable with your productivity. All right, if you haven't already, go ahead and grab the free download. The link is maybe down below the video or on top of the video, depending on where you're watching. Just grab it before you get started so you can follow along. Now, let's get to work. The first thing I wanna show you is about adding an offset path. An offset path is a really quick way to add stitching around any object in your design. So this is awesome for panels, uh, color blocking, applique, anything where you need to add stitching around the edge of the shape. So in this backpack example, I wanna add stitching around all the edges of this front panel. Now, I've got this all grouped, so if I grab it with my selection tool, it's one uh, big group. So I'm instead gonna use my direct selection tool and I've got this panel in the front drawn as individual shapes where I need to add the stitching. So I'm gonna select each of the shapes holding the shift key. And from there, I'm gonna choose object, path, offset path. Once that dialog box comes up, I'm gonna turn the preview on. And what this does is it creates a path that's exactly offset the original path, whatever value you put in here. So a negative value will make the new path smaller, a positive value will make the new path larger. So depending on what you're working on, you might want negative, you might want positive. You don't really have to remember, just turn the preview on and you'll be able to visualize what the result's gonna be. Now I'm gonna choose negative 1.5. I'll hit the tab key to input that value and, and update my preview. That looks good, I'll go ahead and click OK. I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see what I've got is a new path around the edge of all those panels. It's exactly 1.5 pixels offset of the original. Now I wanna turn this into a dashed line, so I click the dashed line in my stroke panel. I also like to give my dashed lines a round cap. It just helps soften the edges for the stitching. And I think that's perhaps a bit thick, so let's drop the dash down to 0.5. Nope, what I actually wanna do is increase my gap to maybe about two, that looks better. All right, from here, if there's any portions of the dash line that appeared that you don't want to show stitching, that's very easy to fix. You can just select those portions of the path and hit delete to delete various portions where you maybe wouldn't have stitching, okay? So depending on your design, you can kind of update the stitching. It's much easier to just create all of it with the offset path and then delete what you don't need. All right, the next trick I wanna show you has to do with width profiles. And there's two different tricks with width profiles. The first is the profile setting at the bottom of the stroke panel. This has various width profiles that are pre-assigned in Illustrator that will help just sort of add a little more dimension to some of your paths. So for example, I've got these uh, sort of movement lines that emulate maybe like a pucker in the fabric or just some dimension in my sketch. And the way I have them set up right now is they're just plain paths and they're a little blunt at the ends. So what I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of softening to the edge of those. So again, I'll grab my direct selection tool. I'll select one of these. Now you'll notice the weight of that stroke is 0.6. Now I know when I originally designed this sketch that I gave all of my movement lines, all my little pucker lines, a 0.6 weight. I've got them here at the edge of the zipper. I've got them here at the bottom of this crease. Um, or at the bottom of this pouch, and then at the bottom of these pouches over here. So instead of manually selecting all of them, I'm gonna select one, and I'm gonna choose Select Same. You'll notice I have a variety of options to select same from, and I'm gonna choose Stroke Weight, since that's the attribute I know they all share. So select Same Stroke Weight, and that will quickly select all the 0.6 weight paths in my artwork. From here, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see the result. I'm gonna just come down to the bottom of my stroke panel, I'm gonna choose width profile number one. And what you can see that did was it just sort of softened the edges from thin to thick to thin, and it adds so much more dimension to my sketch. If you're not seeing that, make sure on the bottom of your, on the drop down of your stro stroke panel that you have show options. It's gonna be at the very bottom. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you with, uh, with various width editing that you can do is for certain things like strapping, um, this is great for ribbing if you want to adjust the width of uh, any portion of a path that might get thinner or thicker depending on sort of how the sketch is done. So I've got this, uh, uh, this strapping up here set up as just a really simple pattern brush. And if we zoom in, I would say in reality, the top portion of this might be just a little bit thinner, right? Depending on like the angle that you're looking at the bag, just to add a little bit more depth to the sketch. So I'm gonna grab the width tool. 
All right, it's about halfway down on the left side of your toolbar. Shift W is the shortcut. Grab that, and I can hover anywhere over the path, and all I do is I click and drag. It's really user-friendly. If I wanna make this wider, I can do that. Now I'm gonna undo that. I don't wanna make it wider, I just wanna make it a little bit narrower. So I can sort of squash that at the top. Now that looks a little bit more realistic than it did before. So it uses the same path, it just sort of squashes part of it and it adjusts the width. All right, the next thing I wanna show you is how to work a little bit more precisely with some pattern brushes, specifically how to change the directionality of pattern brushes. So on the zipper here, I wanna show the zipper teeth open. And so I've got an open zipper tooth drawn here. I'm gonna grab my pen tool. I'm just gonna draw a slightly curved path here that would emulate the pattern, uh, excuse me, the zipper teeth. Now you're not seeing it because the stroke color is set up to peach, which is the same color as the backpack. So let's just go ahead and change that to black. Now, once I've drawn that, I'm gonna come over my brushes panel. I'm gonna choose the zipper open and you'll notice that my teeth look pretty good. Now they're showing up black and the reason why is because I've got the brush set up that whatever color the stroke color is, is the color that the zipper teeth are gonna be. That's fine, I'm gonna jump over to my swatches. I'm gonna grab a dark gray similar to the dark gray that I've used over here in my zipper teeth. Now I'll hit the enter return key to disconnect from that path. And I'll drop another anchor point over here to draw the bottom zipper teeth and one right here at the end and click and drag to curve that. Now it inherited the gray path, which is great. And I'm gonna come over my brush panel and I'll choose zipper open. Now that worked except that the direction of the teeth are going the wrong way. So what I can do is from the brush panel at the very bottom, there's an icon that looks like a little a panel icon, and it says options of selected object. With that path already selected, which it still is since I just drew it, I'm gonna click on that icon. It opens up a dialog box. I'm always gonna make sure my preview is turned on, and then I've got these options to flip. Now, I know I need to flip across. If you don't know if you need to flip across or along, Again, make sure your previews turn on and choose one or the other. So I choose flip across, and what it does is it flips the direction of the pattern brush across the path. Now my pattern brush is going the right direction. I didn't have to create two zipper teeth pattern brushes. I was easily able to just flip the directionality of those. So you have infinite control over your pattern brushes with that option. All right, and the last thing I wanna show you is a really cool trick for working with your color, uh, different color pattern swatches. So I've got this leopard print here, and I wanna pull color chips out of each of the colors that are in here, okay? So I've got the peach color, and then I've got this dark sort of fuchsia purple, and then I have like a camel color. Now, there's a couple ways I could go about getting these colors so I could create color chips, um, but the quickest and easiest way is to select an instance of the pattern swatch on the artboard. So I just have to select any object that has the pattern in it, I'm gonna come over to my swatches panel. I'm gonna click on the new color group folder icon. Okay, it looks like a little folder. I click that and you'll notice it says create from selected artwork. I go ahead and click okay. It creates a new color group that has swatches of all of the artwork in there. So it's got the three colors. It also has the black since that did have a black stroke on it. Now I can easily create color chips I wanna make sure I'm filling that with the right position to show the colors that are in my design. So this is tremendously helpful for anything you're sketching, whether it be a garment with different color block panels and you wanna pull out color chips for each of those or repeating patterns, whether they have three colors like this one or 10 colors like that one. It's the absolute quickest way to create a group of color swatches for your entire sketch. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you were able to at least take a couple of these tricks and implement them in your workflow to speed up, get more confident, and get more comfortable with your productivity. Thanks for watching. I'm so Heidi. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.